What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So I wanna go over some major IRS announcements that we received today. We're gonna to touch on the stimulus package and a potential update that we're getting there. I wanna go over the Russian oil ban, which could completely throw gas prices here in the United States, throw them out of whack and they would definitely go up. Need to talk about inflation worries and also wanna give you some daily news out of Russia and Ukraine as well. So. First off, this is your uh, daily news report for March 4th, which is a Friday. Hopefully you guys have an incredible weekend this week, but let's get right down to the update. Here's what we know. Let's start with the IRS announcements. Now, and if you have questions on any of this stuff, you can always ask your questions down in the comment section below. But also, if you enjoy these daily uploads, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Now, the IRS has said, that people who've already filed their federal income tax returns, they were supposed to, and if you were supposed to get the child tax credit payment or the earned income tax credits, you should have already started receiving your, your uh, tax returns starting on Tuesday. That was March 1st. But they're also urging people that if you have not yet received your federal income tax return, that means you haven't received the money, then go to the IRS website, that's irs.gov, and use the Where's My Refund tool to determine where your refund is at and when it's ultimately going to be processed. They're saying this because they're still getting a lot of calls. Here's the issue. The IRS is extremely backlogged. They're underfunded. They don't have enough people. They don't have enough agents. They don't have enough employees. So when you call, chances are you're gonna have maybe a one to 2% chance of actually getting through to somebody. And that's if you call at a decent time. So if you're trying to call, don't do it. Just look to the Where's My Refund tool and you will find your information there. The IRS also stated that they have already processed 30 million refunds so far in 2022. They have sent back roughly $103.2 billion to the American taxpayers. The average refund is actually, it's actually coming down from what we reported last week, but they are saying, it is $3,473, which is actually $658 larger than last year's $2,815 average return. Now, one thing that has been pointed out by many people here on this channel is that when they tried to do their taxes on their own through one of the online you know, tax return programs, they aren't finding that these are you know, bringing them as much of a refund back. And so what many are saying is that it would be better to go and use a CPA. Now, just, and I'm not trying to give you tax advice here, I'm just, just trying to give you sound advice, is when you can go to a licensed CPA, a quality CPA, they can do your returns for you, they can answer your questions. First off, you would likely get more as a return. Now, whether you get more, but then you have to pay more as a, as a payment to the CPA, I don't know, but you would get more as a return, but you'd also have better peace of mind that it was done right, that every single deduction you could take, you took, any, any type of uh, refund that you qualified for, you get, okay? Sometimes that's not the case when you do it online. So a lot of people have been pointing that out. So a lot of people are urging others to go to a CPA because you will get more money. Now. The IRS has also stated that, and this is something that came out today, that they will attempt to hire about 10,000 new employees. This is gonna help address the backlog of nearly 24 million tax returns, most of which have actually been from the 2020 tax season. So, and we still got a lot of tax returns to do for this year as well. But the employees, they will fill roughly 80 different types of positions. But here's the issue, the IRS is still underfunded. They're not getting more funding. That's the problem. They're, they're gonna hire 10,000 new employees, but they don't have any additional funding. So they don't have the money needed to properly train all these people. So honestly, exactly how they're gonna get this done and get this up in time, I don't know. But as soon as we get any more information on that, I promise I will fill you in on that update as soon as possible. But speaking of the IRS, here's something that's I thought that was this very interesting. And we've seen this, we saw this last year, we're seeing it again this year. Lawmakers are still pushing for the same stuff. But the IRS 
They're trying to get the American people their tax refunds faster. Multiple lawmakers have been discussing that as a result of what could come out of the Ru this Russian, Russian invasion, they are saying that the IRS needs to send money back to the American people as soon as possible. Again, we saw this last year. We saw lawmakers push the IRS to get refunds out to the American people quicker because they were still missing, missing stimulus checks. They, they, this year, they will need the uh, either the earned income tax credit or the child tax credit payments, right? The other 15 or $1,800 per child, right? So those are some big payments. Those are pretty big. And so what we are hearing right now is the White House is considering a ban on U.S. imports of Russian crude oil. Well, guess what happens if they ban Russian crude oil? Prices for gas goes up. Prices for shipping goes up. For transportation goes up. Guess what? You want food? It's going to be more expensive. Now, this is what's going to happen. Oil supply here in the United States would get reduced and experts predict we're going to see $10 per gallon of regular gas nationwide. Now, just before uh, recording this video, I got several messages, several uh, comments here on the channel, and all of them were pretty much the same thing. Gas prices are insane. Uh, uh, one says, as you speak, this is from Vanessa Baltiera. She says, as you speak, California gas has gone up to $6.29 a gallon of regular. Got another one. Uh, $5.18 $5 for a gallon of gas. This is crazy. This, this is what's happening. And even though I saw a, a comment today from somebody that says, I'll pay whatever, I'll pay for gas no matter what, because the alternative is I walk, which is exactly true. And this is the problem. And, and lawmakers are putting it on the American people like you and I, like, I'm not going to walk, you know, two miles to go to the grocery store. I'm not going to do that and then bring all my groceries back. It's going to be very difficult. I'm not going to do that. And so that's the issue. Lawmakers are putting it on us saying we keep on, you know, buying more gas. And so as we buy more and more and more, the supply comes down, the demand goes up. Well, we're going to be paying $10 per gallon very quickly. So that's really insane, but that's pretty much where we're at. But let's touch on possible stimulus for a moment. Now, if you didn't get a chance to go and watch my video that I did earlier today, where I talked about how President Biden is considering additional relief to over 40 million Americans. I'm talking about how what we are hearing at this point is there is either going to be a a uh, you know a student loan payment pause uh, extension past May 1st, or we could see it gets an extension until President Biden actually does uh, an executive order to forgive up to possibly 10 to 50 thousand dollars in student debt. Now. That's both parts of the, that's part of the discussion coming out of the White House. But here's the other thing. Currently, lawmakers want to see more relief to the American people, however they can get it. And many believe that this is the only way that lower income earners would make it through the prolonged war between Ukraine and Russia. Keep that in mind, okay? That they are saying this is the only way, law, the only way lower income households would make it through a prolonged war. And here's the reason they're saying this. If we see this, this war, this invasion go on and on and on for not just weeks, but months, we already seen what's done to gas prices, right? Food's going up. Everything's a little bit more expensive, right? I tried to order a pizza just the other day. Well, it was like five bucks more than when I placed that order last week. I placed the exact same order last week and well, it's like five bucks more. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't be ordering pizza anymore. Don't know. But, and that's, that's the issue right now is Okay, now we gotta really understand what's gonna happen. But here's a major problem. The White House wants to, uh, and this is what the White House wants to avoid. They wanna avoid something called stagflation. Stagflation is where we see increased inflation, but a slowdown of our economic output. And according to multiple economists, we're headed towards stagflation as we speak. Because yes, our supply chain issues are still here. We're not seeing anything really get fixed here and with issues still with china and china backing russia and well we get a lot of stuff from china uh the war between russia and ukraine is still hurting us and also the trillions of dollars in stimulus funding that we received over the past two years according to many economists this is what's causing this this potential stagflation to occur 
and many say that we could see stagflation similar to the 1970s. Uh, I wasn't alive then, so I don't know the, the, the real ramifications of that, but just reading the reports or reading the history, it wasn't good. This was a tough time for the American people. So this is what the White House is doing, and this is why they're taking their time, because according to experts, right now, any wrong move, even one wrong move, could send our economy into a downward spiral. And that would be one of the worst things that could happen because it would also lead to increased unemployment. Today, our, our jobs report came out for the month of February. It, it was looking very promising. We got a lot, like 678,000 new jobs or somewhere around there. Our unemployment rate dropped from 4% to 3.8%. That's good. Wages, right? Hourly wages year over year went up like 5.1%, but month over month, they were unchanged. So this is actually very good news. It's very promising. But with that said, will we see additional stimulus? Here's the answer. According to experts, yes, we will see additional stimulus. It is something that has to be included because of where we are at, you know, economically, but where the American people at financially. They say it will be targeted, very targeted. It's going to go to lower income households. Okay. It could potentially go to businesses to help businesses weather this storm. But experts also say it will come out very slowly. Keep that in mind. If you thought they've, Congress has been very slow to begin with, experts believe it will get slower because like I stated, any one wrong move could send our economy into a downward spiral. They also say, other than very targeted stimulus coming out very slowly to the right groups of people or the right locations within, our, within the country, other than that, there will not be a blanket approach uh, like we saw with stimulus checks over the past two years or uh, you know PPP funding for businesses, right? Unemployment, we're not gonna see anything big like that. And so that's gonna be the issue is, it's gonna be very specific. Now, I don't know exactly how this is gonna look. I'm not even gonna speculate at this point because there, there could be so many options. So as we get more information on that, I promise I will fill you in on those updates as soon as we get them. But let's talk about the news out of Russia and Ukraine as well. I want to touch on this because we are about to see very little information. I want to explain why. First, you need to understand that the news out of Russia will be quite different moving forward. And there was actually a couple reasons for that. Today, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, he signed legislation that criminalizes independent journalism inside the country. As a result of this, many major news outlets have temporarily halted all reporting from within Russia. Russia has also blocked Facebook and restricted Twitter as well. So if you were you know, happy to see all these, and again, it's not a, it's not happy times, it's not you know, great news, but if you were glad that you were at least being up to, you know, uh, updated on what was going on in Russia and Ukraine, well, just understand you, we're only gonna see one side now. So all those people that were protesting in Russia, we're not gonna see the news covering that because that's not what's gonna come out of Russia. So expect less updates on what's coming out of Russia, okay? Expect some, uh, some fake news as well. That's what we're expecting at this time is what comes out of Russia is gonna be what Russia says, okay, you can release this. So again, it's not gonna be great, but I expect information is gonna change moving forward coming out of Russia. So we will see, but that's what we know at this time. As always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on, share all latest news and updates. I just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Have an incredible weekend as well. And I'll see you guys on the next one.